Hi everyone, my name is Kat and I'm representing the Simon Lab here at the Mind Institute. Our lab research focuses on the 22Q population and we use a variety of research methods which includes EEG and ERPs, which I'll be doing a short presentation on today. You might know or at least maybe heard of EEG or electroencephalogram. Basically, we have electrical activity in the brain and if we can detect those signals, it could provide us useful information on how the brain and our mind works. EEG is an electrical electrophysiological method that measures those changes in electrical signals when neurons fire in the brain. These signals are detected by non-invasive electrodes placed on the scalp, and so it's actually an indirect way of measuring neural activity. When a neuron fires, an electric potential is generated, but usually that signal is far too small to detect. Instead, the EEG activity we record is actually the summation of thousands or even millions of neurons that have similar spatial orientation and are firing relatively synchronously. One of the biggest advantages to EEG and ERP is its temporal resolution. We get to see brain activity in almost real time. Today's EEG technology allows us to detect brain activity within a single millisecond or even less. It's also great to measure functional brain regions and see the general areas of active brain regions during specific tasks. However, because it's a measure of thousands and millions of cells, it's not a great measure of specific cells. Here on the screen, I have a uh, picture of what an EEG recording looks like. The signal looks like a continuous line with a bunch of bumps and dips. And that's exactly how we measure changes in brain activity, measuring those bumps and dips. And this leads us to ERP, short for event related potentials. And it's a method we primarily use in the lab. ERPs are derived from EEGs. They're essentially averaged EEG responses that are time locked to a specific task or event. What that means is we'll present a event and whether that's a sound or a picture or a specific task we want the participant to do while recording the EEG. We'll repeat these trials over and over and then through processing and averaging techniques, we'll time lock the signal to when the event happened and then extract the ERP. Like in this picture, it will result in a much smoother, much more specific signal that can be further analyzed. Now, why do we do this? Well, raw EEG recordings show everything that's happening in the brain, and it's hard to detect the specific signal we want, especially when we want to see the different responses to a specific event. ERPs are great for measuring the cognitive activity that is assumed to be related to the event presented. Through ERPs, we can find out what the brain is doing in between the stimulus and response. And here I'm showing you an example of what the raw EEG recording looks like, and then what the ERP looks like extracted from the raw EEG. And you can see from the ERP, we get to see the difference in brain activity between groups from the difference uh, between the red and black line. So how do we collect ERP data? What's great about EEG and ERP is that it's non-invasive and should present little to no discomfort to the person. We fit people in a soft, flexible cap, and then we can clip the electrode sensors on the outside of the cap. Then we insert gel into the electrodes to improve signal detection. After we're done, the cap can be taken off and the worst is unfortunately the sticky gel in the hair. This is an example of how we collect ERP data. The lab coordinators will have a computer that will generate the task and then we can implement events. The screen is projected onto another computer that the person will be sitting in front of and then the person can respond to the tasks. And in our lab, the um, people will respond to events through pressing buttons on a game controller. These are some examples of what ERP data looks like. As you can see, they're much more isolated and clearer than EEGs. On the left, we have ERP data from a 22Q teen. And on the right, we have ERP data from a typical, typical developing teen. Uh, we follow the wave or signal over time. The vertical line is when the event occurred, and then we look for changes after the event. As you can see, we're focused on the signal at the 200 millisecond um, zone, which is where we know the N2PC, a specific ERP component, occurs. We see there's a larger red-green difference in the 22Q teen than the typical developing teen. Um, this indicates what the brain did. We detected a bigger signal for the specific event for the 22Q youth. We can then further our analysis of ERPs by measuring the size of the signal and running statistical tests to find significance between groups. 
From the ERP data, we found that youth with 22Q have a much stronger N2PC than TD youth. That means their attention was captured more strongly by distractors in the task. The PD component indexes the suppression of distractors and youth with 22Q were much less able to suppress the attentional capture. These differences can explain why youth with 22Q respond so differently in the world. This could also explain the basis of some of the learning and mental health challenges that 22Q youth face. Um, thank you so much for joining and listening. I hope this introduction to EEG and ERP was clear and helpful. Uh, thank you again.